Hey, hey! Welcome back to the Let's Play. Today, my friends, we're actually going to start out with the comment of the day. Sahilo says, reminder of the best mount in the game, if not the best pre-hard mode mount in the game. The slimy saddle, foot speed buff, going down your elevator. I wanted to give this thing a bit of a go just to start off today's episode, only if it's true, then we're going to be spending a lot less time falling down our elevator. So currently, we have our bunny on, and that's great. And this is the full speed speed we have currently, but if we were to just go back up top, we're actually going to chop on the slimy saddle, and we're going to, whoa, wow, that's actually kind of nuts, <laughs> wow, I wish that I'd discovered this earlier, because holy guacamole, is this taking no time at all, <laughs> look at this, we're going down so quick, oh, this is fantastic, wow, Thank you so much for turning my attention to this. So there we are, my friends. The slimy saddle. We're going to go ahead and switch on over to that bad boy until something better comes along. So then, my friends, the question is, what are we going to do in today's episode? Well, it's actually raining right now, so I'm just going to do myself a little bit of a favor. And I'm going to harvest all the water leaf here since it only ever blooms during rain showers. Water leaf, very, very useful, of course, for fishing related potions. And just to show you real quick as well, I've actually organized this little potion ingredients barrel in such a way that all of the potion ingredients you can grow are all first here. Look at the amount of ingredients we have. This is just fantastic. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you that since the last episode, I've actually fully decorated my little old ones army arena. Yeah, we've got all of these buffs going on. We've got all of these lovely trees and background fences. Even decided to put a whole bunch more background fences around the actual crystal itself. So yeah, it should be much more aesthetically pleasing to take down the old ones army now. And honestly, it's little bits and bobs like that that really set these sort of normal let's plays apart from my sort of class playthroughs, if you will. I actually spend the time and effort to do this sort of stuff. So then, also in today's episode, I would like to finally get on with making some pylon build. Some of you guys were suggesting we should make the jungle pylon build around where the shimmer is. Only, you know, the shimmer is surrounded by the jungle, so that actually makes a lot of sense. And then when it comes to the cavern pylon, I'm thinking what we do is what I did in a previous Let's Play and have it at the very, very, very far reaches of the underworld. Only that way, we have far quicker access to being able to, you know, take down the wall of flesh real quick. Like, we could just TP, chuck the doll in the lava, and then be on our merry way. We don't have to traverse all of the underworld to be able to do that, you know? So how about that, in fact? Maybe we go for two pylon builds today. We'll go for the jungle pylon for the shimmer, and we shall go for the cavern pylon for the underworld. It does mean that we're going to be exploring a whole bunch more of our underworld. But here's what I'm thinking. Maybe we could try and grab ourselves a shadow key from one of the locked chests over here, and that way we can start picking up a whole bunch of loot from the underworld in shadow chests. So yeah, my friends, lots of building, lots of exploring, lots of looting to be done in today's episode. So if all of that sounds like your cup of tea, then please do be sure to continue dropping likes on these videos. It really helps get these videos out there on YouTube, and it really does help out myself, the channel, and the video massively. If you're new around here, a big warm welcome to you. I hope you'll consider subscribing since we'll be returning to doing these episodes daily. So if you're in the market for your daily fix of Terraria content, look no further. Further, my friends. If you do want to go one further with your support, though, you can head on over to fightergbcom PC to check out my range of Apex gaming PCs. If you're more on the market for some Terraria merch, though, head on over to Terraria.shop and use code Python for 15% off your order. So what do we think, my friends? Is it time to whip out these helium moss bricks, make ourselves a rainbow build down at the Shimmer? I mean, I feel like rainbow and the ether slash Shimmer biome kind of go hand in hand, right? Like, am I the only one who thinks that? I don't know. I just want to use the helium moss bricks. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I've just realized something, actually. We actually do have a usage for the furnace that we put away in the last episode. Only if I was to whip out a paint scraper, we can get ourselves some more moss, chuck it in the shimmer, and then we'll be on our merry way in terms of getting ourselves 
a much higher supply of moss bricks here. All right, before we head on over to the shimmer, I think what we're going to do is another fishing quest. What have we got? Caught on the surface, the dynamite fish. All right, dynamite fish, first time rolling, yes. Come on now, come on now, dynamite fish. Oh, it's a line snap. I can't wait to get a high test fishing line. Hey, that got it. All right, very good, my friends. Let's go and add this bad boy in. See what we get. Sonar potions. Hey, very nice. I can't wait to use all of these fishing potions. You've probably realized by now I'm kind of stocking them all up. And yeah, it actually turns out, look at this. We've got quite a lot of them right now. We've got eight sonar, eight fishing. No crate potions yet, though. That would be nice to have. That would finish off our holy trifecta of fishing potions, of course. So then, putting away the flesh catcher, ladies and gentlemen, let's head on over to the shimmer. And time to use our slimy saddle to descend way quicker as well. <laughs> oh, I love this. I think this is just brilliant. Now what we do is we whip out the paint scraper and we go on a little bit of a moss tear spree here. So here's the jungle, of course. I'm not entirely sure just how far away from the jungle we can be before the pylon will no longer function because it's in the wrong biome. My thinking is what we should do is we should basically plug up the entrance to the shimmer area. In other words, we fill this area up here with the actual build. We can have easy access to the jungle over there by uh, having a door here or something and then easy access to the shimmer on the left. So yeah, when it actually comes down to it, this should be pretty straightforward, my friends. So there we are, neon moss bricks. We've got a whole bunch of those we can make, but do we want to chuck a whole bunch of this stuff in the shimmer as well? I mean, probably, right? Let's go ahead and do it. Sod it. <laughs> we'll chuck it in. We'll get the neon moss. And we'll just get ourselves a whole bunch of goodies. Oh, no way. Mining pants. Wait, 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 wait. I've already got the mining outfit. I think all I need to do now is get myself the mining helmet. You can purchase that from the merchant. I've now got the full mining set. All right, here's what I'm thinking, my friends. We use the neon moss bricks for the actual structure itself. Well, there's certainly some interesting properties with these neon moss bricks. As you can see, when they are adjoined to something, there is no border, is there? So having this be sort of partially buried might not look all that great in the grand scheme of things. Hmm, I don't know. That's something we're just going to have to figure out as we go, eh? So I'm thinking a nice large room at the bottom, which will host the pylon itself, and then maybe a couple of little NPC houses sort of above. And yeah, that will be enough to actually have the pylon function. So yeah, nice simple idea, and I think that will definitely do the job for now. Maybe in the future when we have easier access to more resources, maybe at that point we might be able to start working with some slightly more advanced building bits. You know, Ethereum bricks, for example. That would be so nice to have. You know what would also be nice to have? This freaking manny to go away. He's been harassing me while I've been trying to dig out this place. Go on, get out of here. I can't even see where he is. Oh, he's dead. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you know what? I've got to say as well, the coloring works absolutely perfectly around here. The sort of pinky purple fuchsia type color we've got going on. I I think works really, really well with the shimmer. So, you know, <laughs> I like it. I really do, actually. It's just nice to see Terraria adding all of these bright, vibrantly colored blocks. I think it's absolutely fan freaking tastic. So, let's get these two little NPC houses dug out at the top here, and then we can think about trying to get ourselves some NPCs down here. I'm thinking we just bring down the golden combo of epicness that is the nurse and the arms dealer. Who says you need to wait until hard mode to get yourself rainbow blocks from those elusive rainbow slimes? Not me. <laughs> We're in pre hard mode and we've already got access to rainbow related blocks. I think this is so cool. <laughs> Wait, I just made the wrong walls. Ah, bugger. I meant to make the helium walls. 
There we are. Come on, Python. Stop getting distracted now. All right. I think we've got ourselves a pretty good looking shape here in terms of these here NPC houses. Just got to do a little bit of smoothing. Get some background walls in, of course. Get ourselves some furniture. Maybe some nice lighting as well. Although maybe we do that after we actually get access to the pylon itself. Then we can get back here easier. And then, yeah, really finish this place off. So, let's get some walls in. Let's get some NPCs in. And let's finish this thing. Functionally, anyway, for now. Honestly, my friends, just to have easy access to the shimmer, it's going to be such a game changer. We could do the whole uncrafting, recrafting thing for essentially free reforges. Just so much easier. We're going to be saving so much cash. And ladies and gentlemen, housing is suitable. Housing is suitable. We've got temporary furniture and lighting in here. All we need to do is get some dudes to move down here. So there we are. There's the nurse and there's the arms dealer. It is indeed nighttime right now as well. Ah, oh, dude. Absolutely perfect timing. Things you'll love to see. <laughs> Wait, what the heck is this guy doing? What the... He was doing like a really slow moonwalk and then decided to suddenly speed up. Well, okay then. But there we are. There's the jungle pylon. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have easy access to the shimmer and indeed the jungle. So if we were to head back to base, maybe now we could get to work on trying to figure out some other furniture sets and bits and bobs that we can use to really make that place look good. Colored torches, I think, would be a good start. Can we get ourselves any kind of pink or purple torches? We've got some purple torches here. I think that worked quite nicely. So let's go ahead and see how much of a difference this makes. Putting in the correct colored torches. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're not doing too bad there. However, I've just remembered about the existence of paint. So here we are. There's a paintbrush. We need violet or purple. Hmm. I tell you what, let's buy a bunch of this and we'll also buy a bunch of violet and then we'll see where we can go from there. So starting off with the violet, uh, ooh, that's interesting. I don't think it's actually changed the color all that much. What about if I was to paint these? Oh, no way. These tiki torches look way better when they're painted. Wow. Can you paint by any chance... Ah, I mean, you can paint the base of it, but you can't change the color of the crystal. Eh, you know what? I think I can roll with it. Ah, yes, that's right. Different types of torches. That's what produces different types of campfire. Crimson campfire, I would suggest, might be the closest color to sort of purpley pinky stuffs, right? So if we were to just pop back down here, do a little bit of this. Yeah, you know what? I'm kind of down with it. Here I am just literally painting everything that I can. Um, I mean, why not, right? Oh, no way. It changes the color of the fireplace as well. <laughs> oh, no way. And the furnace. Oh, that is so boss. For any of you guys who don't know, I'm the Flowerpot King in Minecraft. It seems like I may or may not have bought that over to Terraria as well. Only we're kind of going ham with the flower pots here. Um, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> I think we've got ourselves something decent going on here, folks. Yeah. And better still, it looks amazing even on the map here with just the vibrant colors. I think this is brilliant. I really do. Ah, <laughs> oh, brilliant stuff. All right, so that is that build done. We now have easy access to the shimmer and the jungly jungle. The traveling merchant decided to pay our world a visit, but not in the most opportune place I've ever seen. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Again, he's just wound up spawning on the Sky Island. And I'm just like, just why? Like, I told you before, you need to go back to merchant school. Like, you're not going to get much custom up there. The only reason I could fathom he keeps on spawning up there is because there's a specific NPC that he wants to see at that time. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to inject some lore into this thing. <laughs> I think what I need to do, if I'm being sensible, I need to get rid of the torch that is inside of that Sky Island house so that no NPCs will ever be able to live in there. Then the traveling merchant won't ever spawn up there again. So let's do this thing, shall we? Oh, would you look at that? There's another Abigail's flower. <laughs> 
Amazing. There's another gravestone here. That's actually very, very good because eventually I do want to make a gravestone biome. Uh, but yeah, what I want to see is what this guy has. A cape. I mean, it's a crimson cloak. It's not the winter cape that I usually get. But, I mean... I'm just going to do it. What else have we got here? The bamboo leaf for the red panda pet again. Oh, that would have been so cool. We've got the sake and the pad thai. The pad thai seems to give a longer duration, but costs 10 times more than the sake. We literally just spent 25 gold coins on that. What the heck is wrong with me? Yeah, I was right before mining shirt. There it is. The only thing is we just spent all of our gold coins on pad thai. So I couldn't even purchase the mining helmet, even if I wanted to. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. I guess we're going to have to save the full mining armor set for another day. I mean, as soon as we get ourselves the moolah, we'll be able to get it. And then we'll be able to call that armor set done. Wait, there was a bazaar down here the whole time? I mean, all while I was making this house, my Abigail was just going at it with all of the jungle dudes on the right. <laughs> I had no idea that a bazaar had dropped. That's actually quite big because it means we'll be able to hopefully take down Queen Bee with absolute ease now. We won't have to worry about getting poisoned. I think, my friends, if I'm being honest, we may have to split this into a bit of a two-parter because otherwise I think this episode would run on way too long. Only we still need to go for a little bit of an explore through the dungeon and get ourselves the shadow key. Maybe, just maybe, that could be the episode end goal for today. We try and get ourselves the shadow key so that in the next episode we can hit the ground running, head down to the underworld, explore all of the shadow chests on the right hand side here and keep on going until we get to the very far reaches of the world and that'll be the place in which we create the cavern pylon base. So yeah, I think that might be a pretty good way to go. Now to speed things up a little bit, I think what might be a good idea is if we were to maybe bring down a battle potion or to increase the mob spawn rates a little bit just so we can try and get ourselves golden keys a little bit easier. I mean, by doing that, of course, we'll be able to open up more chests. And the more chests we open, the more chances we have of getting the shadow key. Goes without saying as well, we will be able to get ourselves a whole bunch of other loot as well. The Muramasa, the handgun, the velour, all that kind of stuff. It'll all be nice stuff to have, eh, folks? Look at this. The bunny fish. That'd be another nice thing to have. I promise you, my friends, I'm not just sort of faffing around and delaying goals just for the sake of delaying goals. There's just so many things I want to get done in this game that some other things might just get pushed back just a teeny tiny bit. I'll get to everything eventually, but for now, I just want to do a little bit of fishing. I want that bunny fish. Oh, wait a minute. Should we try that thing? Whereby if we put a quest fish away in a bag or an alternate inventory, we'll be able to capture multiple of them? That would be such a good idea. I want to try that right now, actually. So let's see if we can get ourselves a bunny fish. As soon as we do, we're going to wind up chucking it in the void bag, okay? And then we're going to see if we can capture another one. Only there was enough of you folks suggesting I do that to the point where it might actually wind up being a thing. So... No way! We just got them back to back, didn't we? It works! <laughs> you can capture multiple quest fish! Oh, mate! Well, 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 thank you so much for turning my attention to that. Well, we've got three of them now. <laughs> so that means what we can do is we can use one of those bunny fish and put it in like a quest fish museum. Oh, that'd be such a cool completionist goal to go for. Has anyone ever done that yet? Gone for a quest fish museum and collected all of them? I mean, that would be a tall task indeed, but... Ah, equally. I think it would be amazing. So there you go. Irrefutable proof that you can indeed capture multiple quest fish per Terraria day. You've just got to make sure you put the quest fish out of your main inventory and then you're good to go. So then, my friends, over to the dungeon we go. All right, it's battle potion time. Let's see if we can get ourselves a golden key, like, around here. I mean, you don't get typically very many skeletons spawn around these sort of entrance areas into the dungeon, but it's not impossible. You just don't get a lot. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on a minute. So I was able to dig up the dungeon bricks up at the surface, but for some reason, with an upgraded pickaxe, might I add, 
I am unable to dig up these dungeon bricks. Sam, what? Am I the only one who thinks that doesn't make a single shred of sense? Ah, do you know what? Sod it. We'll come back to that chest later on. I think what I want to do is continue exploring more of this dungeon. And obviously, when we get to certain areas, there'll be many, many, many more different skeletons spawning in. And as a result, we should be able to get a lot of keys. Yeah, all right. This should definitely do the job in terms of getting lots of dudes to spawn in. Oh, yep, yeah, there we are. A bunch of little cursed dudes. Hey, buds, give me a Nazar. Ah, pre-hard mode Nazar would have been real nice. <laughs> Not giving up hope yet, though, my friends. We'll probably wind up spending a little bit of time here. Oh, gee whiz. Okay, uh, where? Oh, where was that? Great pressure plate, you son of a gun. Trying to kick my butt. Oh, no way. We actually found ourselves a gold key already. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go open that chest up that was at the top. What are we thinking, my friends? Are we going to get lucky? Shadow key first time rolling. Boom. It's a Muramasa. <laughs> hey guys, there's a portrait of the old man. It's Chippy. Not only do we have actual Chippy on our world as a clothier, but we now have a painting of his face. <laughs> oh, that is actually so cool. Wow, that was a lot of stuff that guy just dropped. Holy guacamole. Damn. All right, golden key. Going to get ourselves another one from this here dungeon slime. Yeah, all right. Things are starting to hot up now, folks. All right, question. What are we going to get from this chest? It's an Aqua Scepter. This chest right here has a blue moon, a whopping 56 melee damage. That is a lot. <laughs> nice dungeon slimes. Love to see it. A myriad of skeletons down here as well. Go on, one of you's got to drop a golden key, right? Surely. Come on. Give me one. What the? What are you doing here? Chippy just teleported over here. I swear that is just what happened there. Chippy actually just TP'd over here. I can only imagine it's because of this statue. Maybe the statue was powered, and by powering this particular statue, which is a king statue, <laughs> it teleports Chippy over. Oh, that is so cool. They consider him a king. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting keys thick and fast. We've got three of them right now. There's another one to be had on the left here by this dungeon slime. Another chest. This one has a cobalt shield and a shadow key. I didn't realize they could both spawn in the same chest at the same time. Wow, that is a pretty S-tier chest, I would say. <laughs> All right, mission complete, ladies and gentlemen. I think what we'll wind up doing is exploring the rest of the chests in a different episode. I mean, at the end of the day, I just wanted the shadow keys so that in the next episode, we can hit the ground running by exploring a bunch of shadow chests. So actually, we've got a lot of chest opening over the next couple of episodes. Dungeon chests, shadow chests. There's just so many different kinds of chests. <laughs> So, my friends, that is indeed going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, do be sure to drop a like beneath the video if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell, of course, if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for all of your lovely support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.